Well, we're so glad you're here with us, ladies. Thank you again for joining us today. Um, we're super excited about this topic. Um, we told you last week that we were going to um, talk about how to study the Bible, and so we're really excited about that. But before we get started, we wanted to tell you what our next series is going to be. We are so excited. We're going to be talking about foundations for any home. Um, and this series is really going to cover several foundational topics to our faith. Um, but next week, we are going to talk about the topic of prayer. Um, that's something Jody and I just really um, felt strongly about, that we wanted to talk about prayer. Um, of course, it's foundational to any home. Um, and this, this series is not just for, um, it's, it's really for any home, any age, any stage in life, um, any Christian home. So we're super excited about it. And um, we hope you'll find that encouraging. Each week we'll talk about a new topic, but next week is going to be prayer. So we are super excited. Um, so last week we talked about why we study the Bible, and I hope that you'll, if you haven't already, you'll go back and listen to that because this one really piggybacks off of this, the, the, the last week's one, um, just why we study the Bible. And then now we're going to talk about how to really put that into practice. So we're excited about that. So it's been interesting as we've been talking about how to study the Bible, you know, you would think, oh, just open up the Bible and read it and study it. Well, we, as we've been breaking this down, there's just so many different aspects and ways that you can go about studying the word. Uh, but one of the primary things that we want to focus on, which is really cool of what the topic we're going to start next week, and that's prayer. So before you start any Bible study, Study, uh, and, and you open your word, the very first thing is to begin in prayer. And so I want to take that opportunity as we're going to talk about this to pray for you and I. So Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you that is so rich of wisdom and that we can gain more understanding of who you are and who we are in you. Thank you that your word is a wealth of, of knowledge and it guides us uh, every step of the way of our life. Uh, God, I pray as we talk about how to study the Bible, Lord, that you would use this time for, for the listener that has been desiring to study and go deeper, but has started and has just kind of stopped because they didn't, they lacked direction or wasn't sure what, where to go or they were doing it right because they feel like there is some kind of order. Lord, use this teaching today to put them at ease, to affirm that they're on the right track and to help guide them uh, during the path of their study and following. And for those that have thought, wow, that's just overwhelming. There's no way I can understand the word for myself. I'd rather be in um, a prepared Bible study or someone else teaching. For that one, Lord, I pray that you um, preach their spirit and give them confidence that they can open up your word, that they can understand your word if they do just a little research, a little digging, and they carve out time and let you do a deeper work in them because they're willing and obedient to do that. Lord, our prayer is that many, many women will go deeper in your word and gain a greater understanding and, and just know that your presence uh, is all in these pages, in these words that you have spoken to us and that we're not to ever take them lightly and to understand that you have made a way for each of us to know you better. So Lord, I pray that you take this time, glorify uh, your name in further your kingdom through this in ways that only you can in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, ladies. We're super excited. So, you know, first thing you start off with prayer uh, as you get ready to study your Bible. Uh, another thing is to simply choose a passage of scripture. Uh, throughout uh, our discussion today, we thought, well, maybe we'll just kind of focus on what we just ended in, in the study of Philippians. So we're going to kind of um, use a couple opportunities to use Philippians 4. So if you want to, if you've got your Bible open, you can uh, turn to Philippians 4, and we're going to look at verses 6 and 7 uh, a couple of times through that. So prayer, and then find a certain scripture um, to, to start diving into. I did want to mention, sometimes finding a scripture to start with is the hardest part for me sometimes when I'm like, oh my goodness, there's the whole Bible. Where do I want to start? Um, that's why I love like our reading plan that our church is doing. I mean, if you want to just jump in with us, 
it's not too late. You don't have to start in January in Genesis, start right now. But that's a great way to just say, you know, um, use your word, Lord. I don't know where to start, but I'm going to start here. So I just wanted to say that because sometimes when I jump into scripture reading, I'm like, oh my goodness, there's so many choices. Where do I go? So that's a good mm -hmm. way to start. Yeah. And sometimes I, 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 um, if I'm not going along with a, a plan or something like that, I'll just hold the Bible and I'll ask God, where would you have me go? Where would you, where is it in here, Lord, uh, for this season and time in my life that you want to use to speak to me? And some, a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times he'll just guide me to a specific book and I'll start there. And, and, um, same, you know, same thing, but ultimately, when we get started, it's healthy for us to get a context, right, Carolyn? Mm, yes, that's so important. Yes. And we talked about that last week too, the importance of context and understanding exactly what the word of God is saying. But um, really, you know, when we start a new book, we want to read, we want to learn about who wrote the book, when was it written, what was happening, go, what was going on during that time? Because that really, um, allows us to see all that the writer is saying through his words. Like when we know that Paul was imprisoned, <laughs> that right. kind of changes the whole perspective of the book for us. So that's super important. And that's where study Bible can come in handy. Um, mm -hmm. Those introductions, or you can research it online. But right. Yeah, exactly. And uh, where you find those is the, the very beginning of um, every book. Like, um, I guess I didn't think about, I, it's not in a non-study Bible where the introduction is there. It just kind of goes straight into that, I think. But yeah. study Bibles, yeah, they do, where you can um, find the author, the, the, the history, the theme, and all that. I think that's also important um, uh, in the big overarching context, context theme of the context, because I know oftentimes when I go into reading the Word, um, if I've not done that beforehand, I get a little lost in the, in the sense of I start making it into my cult culture in my world right now, instead of keeping it into what was going on in, uh, let's say, Paul's day, what was happening in the culture, what was the main focus. And so um, it's, it's important that you, if you're visual, a visual person, to picture yourself, you know, in the desert, so to speak, and you've got sandals on and, and you're standing in the sand. I mean, really, just in, and imagine what they're wearing back then. If, if you're a visual person and start um, imagining things like that, it really helps set your mind and your heart in keeping the context while you're reading it. Because like I said, so often I'll get lost and go and you know, that feels like that's today. And a lot of it does apply. A lot of it does apply today. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. Just, just trying to get a handle on that. Yeah. And as you read more and get familiar with the authors like Paul, you'll learn that Paul tells it like it is. Like that's his style of writing. He's just going to get right to the point. Right. He's going to not, you know, beat around the bush. He's just going to tell it like it is. But in Psalms with David and the other psalmist, that's really beautiful writing, poetry, you know, real... So you can kind of see the differences between the books and the, the real beauty of God's word, the way it's written. And that's a, that's a really interesting thing to study um, as you get to know the authors and get to know a little bit about the, the context of the book. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it, you really do get to know the authors. The more and more that you read and you study on them, you maybe just kind of think, I was like, yeah, I do kind of feel like I know them personally now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but going back to the context, you know, when you see the words therefore uh, or so that um, or the word but, um, read a few verses before that, or may, maybe, maybe even the beginning of the chapter or the last five verses, uh, because if you're just reading along for the read, you know, sake of reading, remember we're talking about studying the word. So you want to go, now what was that there for? What, why did he say therefore? It's because of this, now then therefore, or so that, so there's a great purpose that fit, you know, those words indicate a big statement that he's trying to convey. Mm -hmm. um, so that keeps us in context. Something I do want to mention, we've talked about this in the past, is um, I love using different translations. Uh, 
especially if I get caught up on one particular phrase or word and going, yeah, I don't know exactly what that means. And I've looked through my own translation of my Bible. I typically use an, a New American Standard Bible, um, but I also love the ESV, the NLT, the CSB, all these wonderful initials, right? <laughs> Christian Standard Bible, New Living Translation. Uh, Engl what is the ESV? Standard. Yeah, yeah, English standard yeah. <laughs> um, version. So uh, that's what all those initials are, a different, just different versions. And so they're, they're saying the same thing, but with different words. And for instance, I want to give you an example of this in using Philippians um, uh, 4, 6 through 7. Now I'm going to read, um, or, or Carolyn, would you read the ESV version? And then I'll read the N NLT. And I want you all to listen to the differences and, and, and we'll kind of point that out too. Yeah. All right. So I will read from the ESV, um, Philippians four verses six through seven. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It's my life verse by the way, I cling to that most more than anything. So listen now to the New Living Translation. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can under understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. So we see that they say the same thing, but... Um, the NLT uses the word worry where the ESV is anxious. Mm -hmm. And so it just, it, and then there's um, the ESV is in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then the NLT is tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. I just love the simplicity um, mm -hmm. uh, in the NLT. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so hopefully that helps you ladies just see why the difference and um let's see i do want to go ahead and i'm going to attempt to screen share oh, i was about to say uh, that's the perfect time to show this this resource right right let me let me um work on that real quick here and those of y'all that are listening if you're listening to the podcast or just the audio version of this we'll we'll describe it but we also have a resource list that's going to be on our page inglewood baptist dot com slash women so you can um go we actually have links so you can actually just click on the link and it will take you right to these websites so if you want to look those up afterwards go there that's where they all are so i want to make sure carolyn you see my um yeah. uh, bubble gateway right yeah that's perfect okay i want to make sure <laughs> so ladies what i've what i've done is if you go on the website and if you type in biblegateway.com It'll bring you up um, to what I'm at right now. I love to use the classic version of this. And um, to go to that is to the far left top where you go back to classic site. And I click on that. Let me get that clicked on. And then I simply type in, it says enter a keyword passage or top topic. I'm going to type in uh, Philippians here. Uh -oh, if I can spell it all right. <laughs> Four, um, six through seven, and then I can go ahead and change. I'm gonna all these. It gives you a list if you do the click down arrow, a list of a ton of different translations, and I'm gonna click on the New Living Translation. That was one that I read to you. I'm gonna click search, and then it's gonna give it to me. And then I can, uh, if I want to compare different versions side by side. Uh, this is a great tool. So um, right above where the scripture is, is showing us, there's a little, it looks like, I, to me, it looks like a hair comb back to back, <laughs> but it means parallel. But you, you click on that and then all of a sudden next to each other, I've got the NLT and then to the right, I can choose what we were doing a while ago, um, the ESV. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to click on that. And then You've got right there, that's how I found um, to convey to you and because I don't have an NLT Bible, you know, in my hand or in my house, really, but I can go online and find it. So that's just one of the resources that we wanted to, um, to share with you there. 
Yeah. That's awesome. Yes. And while we're talking about um, versions, we do want to mention that a lot of the versions that we're talking about are literal translations, but there are some that are more paraphrased translations. So we kind of wanted to, you know, warn you about that and, and make sure um, when you read that, you know, just be aware of that too, that some are paraphrased and some are more closely translated from the original version. But Thank you for remembering to mention yeah, yeah. That. that's good stuff right there. That's good right there. All right. So do we want to go in and talk about some of our methods that we use to study? Yeah, with? let's do it. Let's go for it. Okay. All right. So we're going to stay in Philippians 4. This is going to be like our, our practice scripture for this week. Um, so Philippians 4 verses 6 through 7, and we're going to use a method called the sword method. Again, this is going to be on our worksheet on our website. So um, go there and print this out for yourself because we have a challenge for you. We'll talk about that at the end, but um, we have a bunch of different methods for y'all to try. But the sword method is the very first one. Um, and it just basically asks four questions or five questions, sorry, um, about the scripture that we are studying. So should we read the scripture again, Jody? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's read the scripture one more time. You go ahead. All right. Uh, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so the sword method first asks us, what does this teach us about God? Um, which I think is such a great way to get our focus right when we're studying scripture. You know, we always want to look for what is this telling us about our Lord, about the Lord. This is his word and he wants us to know him deeply through this. So what is what does he want us to know? And so one of the things, the main thing is that he wants us to come to him with our anxieties and our worries through prayer. Um, yeah. So that's so awesome. It tells us so much about how much God loves us, how much he cares for us, how much he cares about our worries and our anxieties, which is incredible <laughs> that the God of the universe wants to, to hear what's worrying our heart and <laughs> causing us to be anxious. Awesome. Right. Some people is like, well, he's too busy for my little concern. I've heard that so many times. Yep. It's like, no, he wants, he's involved in every detail of your life if you invite him because he wants to be. So that's good. That's right. That's right. So yeah. So that, what does that teach us about God? And then what does it teach us about man, about humans? Um, this one, we worry a lot and we lose peace because of that worry. That is so true. And it really helps us get a perspective about ourselves um, and about how we relate to the Lord. <laughs> um, yes. So that's awesome. And then is there a sin to avoid? Yes. <laughs> Worrying, right? Right, That's right. such an obvious sin in that, in that section. So is there a promise, a promise to claim that he's going to guard our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus? That's such good news. And then is there an example to follow? Um, don't worry, but go to God and let him um, calm your soul, calm your soul through prayer. So um, these are all things that uh, the sword method kind of helps us to kind of focus on um, and I love that about Bible study methods. Sometimes we can just read over the scripture and say, oh, that sounds good, and then move on. Um, I know I'm guilty of that when I'm reading through and like, oh, okay, that's great. But if we really take the time to really dive in to just those few verses um, using a question method like this, then it really helps us to kind of draw out those truths um, that are yeah, so I wonderful and yeah, I do want to add, though, I have, as I've used this method, I, this is one of the primary ones I use or have used. Um, I have discovered there's not an, always an answer for all five questions. Sometimes you'll get a scripture where there's not a mention of a sin to avoid. And right. so if you're like, but there's got to be an answer, I want to <laughs> let you know right now for type eight uh, personalities, not all of the questions have an answer for whatever verse that you're in. So just go ahead and know that going into it, but look and make sure before you move on and go, okay, well, there's no sin in this, you know, a phrase or block of scripture to, to avoid. So, and yeah. you know, and to uh, uh, keep in mind that uh, all of us have different backgrounds and when we're reading things, we have a filter of that background. We, 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 when we're reading the word, um, 
So we want to all, we want to be careful to always uh, apply the proper principles by first understanding what it means um, and, and keeping it. It's so important to keep it in that context and then start start filtering through. Well, how can I, that apply to me? How can I live that out in my life today? Um, so we can do that. Um, let's see. We've got a couple other things. Um, Oh, cross references, Carolyn. Yes, so important. I use that a lot. Do you? Yes, yes, it's yeah. so important. I think it helps us kind of understand the scripture a little bit more. Just like um, singing in a different version um, of mm -hmm. the Bible, yes. it really helps. Seeing it in a different part of scripture, I think, can really help too. And I know everybody, every Bible's different, but even if it's not a study Bible, most likely you've got a cross reference on your pages and you've looked at it before and you're like, I'm not even sure how to use that or what that's there for. Mm -hmm. uh, I have found that to be true for a lot of people. So it's those tiny little columns. A lot of times it's right down the center. It could be on the bottom of, of your page or even on the outside. Yeah. So if you're watching the video, Carolyn's showing us right in the center and it's like, well, if you've avoided that before, let's stop avoiding it and, and learn how to use it. I, I tend to use the cross references before I look into my study notes that I have. I have a study Bible. Let me back up and say that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so before I go and read what a commentator says, I like to try to let uh, understand what I'm reading by letting the word speak to the word. Mm -hmm. and that there's no other interpretation of what that can mean and it really oftentimes clears things up mm -hmm. so for example in my study bible um again going in looking at philippians 4 6 um you, you ever looked at the little little um letters mm -hmm. or the little numbers and go i don't even know what that's there for or i, I did or i forgot or mm -hmm. that's just so I want to simplify it and just help you go uh, in Philippians 4, 6. I've got a tiny little A above the B, the word B-E. It says, be anxious for nothing. And so what I do is I go in that, that, those tiny little columns and I look for number six because it's talking about verse six. So I go in and I find, um, I might have to grab my glasses. There we go. Um, I found it. <laughs> At verse six, and then I find the little A, and then it tells me Matthew 6, 25. So what it's telling me is the cross-reference. It's saying, go to Matthew 6, 25. So I'm going to turn to that and read it. Remember, it's be anxious for nothing. Well, Matthew 6 25 Jesus is saying for this reason I say to you do not be do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink nor for your body as to what you will put on it's not life more than food and the body more than clothing you see how that cross reference it speaks truth to it to to that and then also, um, so you, you do that with all the little letters that you see. And then what about the numbers? What do the numbers mean? A lot of times the little numbers, one, two, three, or four, what have you, you do the same thing. You go and you look for number six and you look for that number. Uh, for instance, in my Bible, um, in, cause I'm in the new American standard Bible, uh, in verse seven, there's a number one above the word comprehension. And when I look for on um, in the cross reference number seven, I find number one and it says L I T, which means literally, and it's got the word mind. So I can go in the peace of God, which surpasses my mind basically will guard uh, your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So um, you know how you go to the different translations to look for different words? Sometimes they're actually right there in front of you in your cross-reference. So I get super excited about cross-references because I have gotten so much understanding and, and, and went down so many different rabbit trails of going um, from all these cross-references. And it's just a beautiful story that God weaves throughout all of scripture Yep. And, and it just feeds my soul. And I hope that um, it does the same for you. So yeah, I'll let you talk for a second. I get excited about it. <laughs> That's awesome. I think the best commentary on the word of God is other sections of the word of God. So 
that yeah. cross referencing just allows us to do that. It's so good. Um, we also mentioned an interlinear Bible that you can find on our Bible study tools, um, biblestudytools.com. Um, and that means like, in, like taking the English word, the Greek word, and the Hebrew word, and which is something I love to do. I think it's so, so interesting to study um, what words were used in the original language. So um, all of the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, um, and then all of the New Testament was written originally in Greek. And so um, when we do word study specifically, it's so interesting to go back and look and see what words the writer actually used, um, because those languages are so uh, rich with meaning. So when you look up a Hebrew or Greek word, you can really gain some understanding on that. So, okay, Jody sharing our screen again. Can you see that? But you see Bible study tools? I can't yep. make sure. So um, if you're just listening in, I'm going to the website. It's called BibleStudyTools.com. Bible now, tools has an S on the end. It's important that you put the S, BibleStudyTools.com. And this is an incredible resource that um, someone had shared. I think I first learned about it from Katie Orr. But if you go to the top bar and, it, and you do the drop down by the word Bible, let me get you and you go all the way down to the bottom of, of that list there's it says interlinear bible and you click on that and then when that comes up you can simply i'm letting it um finish doing the upload here slow internet where i'm, I'm at i type in again philippians if i can spell that philippians is a tricky um it word is. To, to spell i don't know about y'all <laughs> good <laughs> one L, I know. I'm not the only one yeah and then I like to do the new American standard bible and I click on that and then I then to the right it says find it it's like you know go or search uh, same same context and so that's coming up and what Carolyn was just describing to us happens so um you see, I've got be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made to, known to God. Mm -hmm. And then you've got um, like the, uh, is that, what is that? Is that Hebrew? Because we're in the. It would be Greek. Yeah. So it's the Greek word. Yeah. Okay. Greek. I get them flip. I say I get them flip. So thank yeah, you. I've yeah. got my scholar on the other end taking care of it. So, <laughs> so well, that's, that's Greek to me because I can't understand what it says, but it gives you the English and right below it gives you all the Greek and it tells you if it's a verb preposition noun and all that fun stuff. But what I love is that um, any of these letters that are highlighted, like the word anxious, you can click on that word anxious and it's gonna take us to a definition where it gives us the original Greek word, um, the different definitions to be troubled with uh, cares, to care for, look out for a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives you other um, uh, verses that you can look at where this word is actually used. So it's used 17 times throughout the, um, um, New Testament. So you can just do a deeper study there uh, and, and hear some other cross references. So I'm just showing this to you, not going in depth with it all, but to go, hey, if you got some time to just go to some of these websites and play around and figure out what you're looking at, because that's what I had to do. I just, I didn't come on a website and go, oh, I know where everything is and what it all means. No, I spent time clicking and, and turning and going back and clicking and turning and reading and just figuring it out just like you would anything else. And now it's like, oh, when I'm studying my Bible, I can go and I know what resource to go to to find what I'm looking for. Like if I want Greek or, or um, Hebrew. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to stop sharing this and get back to our main screen. And these are free resources. Yes, which is so free. Nice. Yes, <laughs> that's so awesome. All right, so we want to move on and talk about some study Bibles. We talked about that those can be such a good resource, and we do have just a couple recommendations for you just out of our own personal collection that we like to study from. Um, I like to use the ESB study Bible. I think it's really awesome. Um, and one of the newer, newer study Bibles is the CSB study Bible, which um, is really, really neat. Um, one of the unique things about it is it does have some colored um, pictures in it, just of different 
um, maybe like cool. some yeah. stuff that archaeologists have found. Yeah, just just really interesting things. It has all the maps and the notes and stuff like that. But um, and I like the CSB version. It's really it's a clear, concise version. But um, I like it. So th those are my two recommendations. I use the Zondervan NASAB study Bible, um, and so uh, you know, thinking about study Bible gives us those cross references, but also um, the one I'm using have multiple different commentators. Commentators are, um, correct me if I explain this wrong, Caroline, but theologians, those that have spent hours and years and years of studying to put information, to connect dots right at our fingertips. That they have saved us all of that. <laughs> so they give us a lot of insight um, just automatically in these. Uh, I just want to read one of my study notes. Um, well, maybe two of them actually in Philippians 4, 6, where it's talking, it's, it has the word anxious that this is talking about. It says self-centered, counterproductive worry, not legitimate cares and concerns for the spread of the gospel. Oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. isn't that good? I mean, that's like, it stop it because it's not for the good of the gospel. But then in verse seven, peace of God, um, not merely a, a psychological state of mind, but an inner tranquility based on peace with God, uh, the peaceful state of those whose sins are forgiven. And so in my study notes, there are a ton of other cross references, but also in the study notes, it explains, I, um, I probably should have given some other examples, but it really explains, uh, helps with context sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, so they'll, they'll help you keep in context as well. Uh, I was trying to think, was there something else that we were going to, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> this is key. Yeah, this is key. Um, when we're reading a, a, what a commentator's notes in, in, in there, I want to remind us to watch out for words like probably that they use or several, several factors may be at work here, or there are at least two considerations to look at. In other words, the commentator is saying that we have a good, this isn't fact, but we have a good idea and this is what we believe it's leaning toward. That's when you go back, what does the word say about the word? Mm -hmm. And that's where you hang your hat. Mm -hmm. You don't hang it on, on the probabilities, but it also opens up, um, uh, it expands your horizon a good bit to help you think outside of your box as well. So um, don't hear me say that what the commentators are saying there is bad, but when you read those words, catch it and go, wait a minute, they don't even know. Mm -hmm. They're saying probably or maybe. Right. And, yeah. and so, so I, I just thought that was important to, to yeah. me. I mean, that goes hand in hand with what we were talking about last week about, you know, uh, the word of God is the only word of God. And so these commentators, while they can help us really process things and it's such a valuable resource, but they are human. So we need to always weigh the truth of God's word against anything, any other commentary or any other notes. So um, it's awesome. And these Bibles we've recommended, I mean, we really trust that they are good resources, but um, always when you're reading a human being's commentary on the word of God, just always be alert, be on guard and, and know that truth of God's word. So that's good. Yeah. Um, another thing with just talking about studying your Bible, um, it's always a good idea when you're reading a, a, the scripture, if you're wanting to go deeper is, um, make a list of the facts or the nouns or the verbs, um, uh, you know, when you're studying like that. And also, um, I like to, I don't necessarily personally have a color code, but I know this works for a lot of people. <laughs> if you saw my Bible, you would think so, because I've had a ton of different colors, <laughs> but honestly, they don't mean anything to me. <laughs> it's just my personality. I'll just pick up whatever color I got. I just want it colored so it'll stand out when I go back to it later. But for those that like order and they need a little bit more structure in their life, um, well, Carolyn will talk at the end about our, our resource that we've got for you to print out. Uh, some you can, I'll just kind of go in a little bit in depth from that, Carolyn, on that particular okay. one. Um, for instance, if you uh, read a scripture and you want to use the red, a red color because 
you things to avoid such as sin. You color it red or use blue for an attribute of God that you've read or green. That, hey, this is a growth point or yellow things to apply. So you can make your own coloring system um, for that. And I know for me, uh, I know if you're listening and not watching, you can't see this, but I'm, I'm holding my Bible up and, and I, I mentioned in there, I don't, well, shoot, you can't really see it a lot. There's so much. No, you can't see it. Oh, there you can. Yeah. I got tons of sticky notes all in my Bible. I, and, and on top of, I don't mind writing, not, not everybody likes this, but I, I write in my Bible all over it. Mm -hmm. But I also love sticky notes because I can write little notes that, my Bible doesn't have room and I just leave it in there and it's great to go back to when I'm going back to the scripture and I read those notes that I put in there and it's almost a fresh. Yes. So do you have some other thoughts? That I do. Yes. I love sticky notes. I have my little, I have a little pouch. I brought it so y'all can see that are watching the video. I have a little pouch with my sticky notes and then I have, um, Jody, if you're, I love papery stuff and office supplies. So little page. <laughs> oh, <packs>. Yeah. <laughs> Stick and they don't tear your Bible pages, but I love to do that and you know, like point it at a verse that I, I really want to focus on or I want to stand out, and then you know, my little pins and stuff. So, yes, I, I mark it up, but um, I have sticky notes and flags and stuff like that, and that might <laughs> be too chaotic for some of y'all, and that's fine, but <laughs> nice. Nice. I need to mark things that stand out to me. But yes, I love to journal too, I, that's been a really um growing point in my, in my quiet time, um, over the years. I just love, I just have a little journal. doesn't have to be anything fancy, but I just, um, if I'm using a method like the sword method, I'll write out my answers to those questions. Sometimes even if I'm just reading, um, if a verse sticks out to me, um, I might write out that verse in my own handwriting just entirely, or I might make a little note of something that stood out to me or something that, um, God really spoke to a certain thing going on in my life right then. And I love to look, it's been a blessing in my life to look back and see, and um, just notes what I knew was going on in my life and notes where God took me in the scripture and showed me the truth of his word. It's so, it's such a really rewarding thing. Um, so I, I think it's worth the time to take that time and just journal. Um, it helps me to remember things too, if I'm writing it out. I need to remember a scripture I'm, I'm gonna write it out just so I can have that that practice but um yes journaling has been a an important thing um also apps and we'll talk more about this when we talk about our our worksheet but we have some like um helpful websites and then helpful apps that we'll we'll talk about so we're going to talk a little bit about what our personal study time looks like um Jody you want to share about your your quiet yeah. time yeah okay so before i share just disclaimer i'm in a new stage age and season of my life i'm an empty nester um you know i i'm careful when i say i don't work outside of the home i am infiltrated in ministry full time um but so my life is busy and chaotic um but this hasn't always been my luxury to have such time to spend doing what I do now. So I remember back in the day when my kids were small, I, I did good to read a, a devotion and maybe read a short passage of scripture. And that would be actually sporadic, not even every day. Okay, so that's the disclaimer. That's where I started, all right? And so years later, an empty nester and where I am now, I spend anywhere from an hour to two hours early in the morning with my Lord. But I have to admit and be transparent, my mind is not always sharp right when I wake up. So I want to get the cobwebs out. I like to do some things before I get into the Word because when I'm in the Word, I don't want to have to... I don't know if you're like me, but I have, I have read a whole paragraph and go, I don't even know what that just said. Let me read it again. So mm -hmm. I don't want to do that by the time I really get into the word. I want my mind to be crisp. So while I'm drinking two cups of coffee, <laughs> that's what it takes. I, I start, yeah, I start off with some simple things. Uh, I'm on my phone. Actually, I have the U version app. Um, we'll go into more detail about that, but there's a verse of the day there. Um, and then I have, and I read that verse of the day and then I have the Bible gateway, 
um, downloaded on my phone and there's a verse of the day right there. So I start off by reading two verses every day and then I go into reading a, a handful of devotions and they're all pretty short devotions, but there's a devotion on you version that I read. Um, uh, and if, if you want to jot these down too, if you're looking for a good devotion, these, these are, have always been solid. I've not found much of anything that I've questioned greatly and had to go, you know, are they, what are they saying here? But anyway, um, you version, my utmost for his highest. I love that one. And I actually have that emailed to me. Uh, so it's there in the morning for me. I don't have to go searching. Uh, and then I have um, Blackaby. It's experiencing God day by day. Uh, that's a really short one. But that one alone, I tell you, has been most, um, I've had more growth doing experiencing God day by day um, than any of my devotions. And then uh, the heart of worship. Um, our pastors have some devotions in that. And I also do the daily e-connect. Now, I know you're going, whoa, that's just a lot. That's just too much. I can't focus. That's fine. Don't do any or do one. I'm not saying that you needed it. This is just, again, where I am. And, okay, so now by now, hopefully, Lord willing, my mind is awake and I'm fully engaged. I'm about a cup and a half of coffee, coffee in. And then I go into a Proverbs a day. So whatever day of the week it is, I think was um, – uh, Let's, say, let's just say on Sunday the 19th, I opened up to Proverbs 19 and I read that. And then I'm also reading through the Psalms and I read a Psalm and I just kind of dive into that Psalm. And then uh, where I go into a deeper study a lot of times is whatever other book that the Lord has me in, if it's in a reading plan with the church or something he's led me uh, to go into, um, I, I really spend the rest of my time um, marinating and cultivating through the word and doing some of the study techniques that we've talked about. And, um, and then I'll, I'll spend a little bit of time of journaling. Mm -hmm. um, so you can get a lot in, in really in an hour, if, if, you, if you have an hour. <laughs> I know that's a luxury. Um, but if you have an hour, you can get a lot done in an hour. But even if you have 15 minutes, you would be amazed if you're intentional and you have it planned out the night before what you're going to tap into, what, what is your rhythm going to be for the next morning, you can get a lot in and not cram it in, but God will give you the ability to soak it in when you set your mind um, and doing that. So but that's, that's what I do with my personal relationship with God in that time, um, not including the other things that I do um, for preparing for this or um, other things that I'm involved in as far as ministry. This is completely separate because I need it, I need it to be about me and God and nobody else. You know, I just need more of God and I need to just... Um, be with him in that process and not thinking about those other things so yeah I know that's a lot that's why I did the precursor because I was like what you do all that I can't do all that I don't want you to do all that that's just where I am at I can't say it enough yeah, that's awesome so yes mine looks a little different because I have three young kids and it should by the way <laughs> yes and that's okay um so you know I always try to wake up early, but you know how, it doesn't matter how early I get up, I might have one or two or three little people joining me. And that has taken some getting used to um, throughout the years of being a mom. But then I realized what a blessing that is um, for me to kind of demonstrate to my kids, like, I want this time with the Lord. Like, I'm, I'm going to spend this time with him. And um, it's such a joy to see Jeremiah, our 10-year-old, spending time with the Lord. Like we'll sit on the couch together and he'll have his Bible open and I'll, we'll be reading our separate things, but we're each spending time with the Lord. And I think that's such a blessing. So, um, sometimes you just want that alone time to read the Bible and we might not get it if we're young moms and that's okay. Um, yeah. I really think God uses that in our kids' lives and in our life to stretch us and then to disciple our children. I think it's just really something, um, you know, they say, if you want your kids to be readers, then read in front of them. If you want your kids to study the word of God, then study the word of God in front of them. Um, they'll remember that. I think they'll remember their mom, um, spending time in the word of God. So, um, yeah, so it's not always quiet. It's not always, um, 
perfect and that's okay. <laughs> but I do think it is important for us to try to find some time that is quiet. Um, not having TV on or yelling or, <laughs> you know, running, kids running around. We can find a little bit of time and just help us focus. Sometimes I need a little quiet to focus on the reading. So um, I usually begin by doing our um, church's reading plan wherever we are. And then um, I love to spend time in Psalms and Proverbs. I alternate. I'm in Psalms right now. Um, I just, I've always loved the book of Psalms. It's just an encouragement to me. Now, when I'm saying this, this can be split up throughout the day because it's usually not a, you know, I, I might not have an hour chunk in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, listen to her. <laughs> you gotta make it work. And that's hard. Sometimes we have that idea that we're just gonna have that silent hour with the Lord or um and that may not look like that for you in your life. And that's okay. Just as long as you're making that effort to spend the time with the Lord, even if it's before you go to bed at night, um, finishing up that time. That's important. Um, so I do, but I do love to start the day with reading scripture. I just think it helps my mind focus better. It helps me focus on the challenges of the day um, with a different perspective. So I think it's important, even if it's just 15 minutes in the morning and then continuing on whenever you have time. But, um, and I mentioned, I love journaling and it helps me process things. Um, I love to write out prayers. I love to write out uh, scripture, what he's teaching me. Um, and then I love to have that as a record of what's going on in my life when, um, you know, when I'm reading the scripture. So a couple of tips that I have found that have really helped me, and I, these are not tips of my own. I've heard these from other people, but one of them um, is so practical, but just having a notebook next to you where you can jot down th things that come into your mind. Um, sometimes when I'm sitting quietly, I think of things I need to do or things I should have done or <laughs> things that are upcoming. And I really, I'm tempted to go and do them. Um, but if I really want to set a time, just me and the Lord quiet, if I can jot those notes down, then they're out of my mind and I can focus on the scripture and studying the word of God. So that has been a really practical thing. That's simple, but um, just like a place to dump all my thoughts and then focus on the word of the Lord. So that's good. And then finding a quiet place, which, you know, it's not ever going to be perfectly quiet and that's fine, but just so that you can focus and really um, not just read and let it go over your head or just forget about it, but really process, really study and spend that time um, with the Lord. So that's what it looks like. It's not the same every day, <laughs> um, but I think it's important to squeeze it in. You know, it's it's a priority. It needs to be a priority in our life. So, and starting that time, even if it's just ten minutes in the morning, yeah. um, just mm -hmm. real quick, just starting your day with that. And then, um, if you're studying further, going deeper, you know, don't feel bad if you're doing it in your bed before you go to sleep or um, just throughout the day. He wants us to know him through his word, and it's worth the time. So. Um, right. Yeah, I yeah, I, I, that's really good, Carolyn. I, and uh, I think the key word is intentionality. Mm -hmm. I, I have not grown in studying the word and, and getting to know more of who God is by being lax, by going, I wished I would. Right. Darn it, I just can't seem to get my system. Because I say all that because I've, I've said that and I've done that. And it became to a point where I craved more of knowing God more than anything else, more than my excuses. And I thought, I'm going to be intentional and I'm going to make this a priority on my calendar. And some this might rub some of you wrong, but I'd say schedule God in, you know, make it. In other words, because we're human and we're life and it's busy and we make a hard appointment with God that nothing can get in its way. Mm -hmm. and and start aiming for it in that in in that that mindset it puts a, an importance on it mm -hmm. and it helps you shift your perspective going this isn't really an option anymore mm -hmm. it's 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 an important appointment that i must and i need to keep if i want to grow in my knowledge of the word, if I want to grow um, in understanding the word, if I want to grow in knowing God better and his attributes, if I want to to understand his promises and just what the scripture says. But at the end of the day, ladies, 
you you can open the word yourself you can read the word yourself you can understand what the word says you can and it's by taking these small little steps and just taking us uh, one to two verses just like we did with philippians 4 6 through 7 and do do that um carolyn you made me think um you know my oldest son is 27 and not too long ago, just a couple months ago, we were having a spiritual conversation. He said, well, mom, you still get up and do your devotions of quiet time in the morning with the Lord, right? And at some reason that set me back. I was like, oh, you, you knew I did that? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, you know, he's, he's been gone for a long time, but he saw me, both of my boys saw me uh, in back in, um, where we were, I, I didn't have a, a secluded place. It was out in the open, but there was a special chair. Mm -hmm. They knew when I was in that chair that that was the time. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. So I was just looking. Can you still see me? Something about the um, Zoom just okay. popped up. So. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I love that. And I think it's beautiful that we can ask the Lord to give us that desire. If you don't have that desire, I think it's um, such an awesome thing that we can ask the Lord to help us and he will under, he'll help us understand this scripture. Um, he's given us the Holy spirit to help us understand. So if we are frustrated and we don't understand, or we're just not having that desire, he will give us that desire. If we're just going to we just need to pour out our heart to him and tell him, you know, what's going on. And he's, he's there to help us. So I think that's um, such a good encouragement. If you're new to studying the word of God, or if you've lost that desire to study the word of God, um, just, just talk to the father about that. And he, um, like we said before, he wants to hear from us. <laughs> like he's inviting us to come talk to him. So um, that's, yeah. So, so awesome when we come to the father and just express what we're feeling. And, um, he's going to help us study this word. Um, he wants us to know him. So that's right. You want to, uh, you, I think it'd be a good time to wrap up by um, sharing some of the Bible study methods, tips, and resources that we've uh, provided a printout for you. Um, so in, if you're listening, you can go to uh, inglewoodbaptist.com backslash women and, uh, there you'll be able to see, um, the printout that we're talking about here their printouts and they have links in them. So you can just click them. It's very convenient. So the sword method is on there, which we used as our example um, just today during this talk. There's also another method, um, the four questions method. Um, and actually on that, on our website, there are cute little journaling pages that go along with those two methods, which I love. So um, go check those out. That's really neat. Um, there's another one. Um, it's taken from Rick Warren's Bible study methods. It has a bunch of questions to answer. I like this one. Um, it goes a little bit deeper. Um, and then just some other ideas of um, ways to study the Bible. You can do a character study where you pull out one person from the Bible um, to study and use your concordance and your cross references to find um, everywhere this this person is mentioned and just learn about their life, learn about their strengths and weaknesses, what their life can teach you. That's a really neat way to study scripture. Um, and then breaking down a single verse from the Bible, kind of a little bit about what we did um, with Philippians 4, um, just picking out a verse or two and breaking it down. And then you can also do a topical or thematic or word study. So that's where you would study like um, grace. If you wanted to study the word grace, you would find all the scripture references on the word grace. Um, you could you use that um, Hebrews, Hebrew or Greek uh, words. You can look those up and see um, what grace means in that. So um, that's a really great way. And we also wanted to talk about scripture memorization because that's so important to studying the word of god um internalizing uh, the word of god by memorizing scripture so um one of the ways we talked about was writing out a verse on a note card and just placing it somewhere where you see it every day that's a simple practical way you know if it's on your bathroom mirror if it's in your car if it's by the window where you wash dishes it's great um just having that scripture there and then saying the verse out loud. Now, this may seem really silly, and it might feel really silly when you're just saying the verse out loud, but that can really help us um, as we're repeating a verse over and over again out loud in our voice. Um, it can help us memorize. So 
that's a great way. And then a scripture memory app. Um, scripture typer, it's actually called uh, the Bible memory app now. It changed its name, but um, that one is really cool. You can um, choose your scripture, write it out. They'll quiz you, like they'll take away certain words in the scripture and you can type it in and see if you get it right. Um, it's a really neat way to quiz yourself. And then Fighter Verses is another app. And that one actually gives you a scripture to memorize. I think it's each week. Um, it suggests a scripture memory verse and then it'll it'll help you practice those. So those are some really cool, um, cool things to memorize scripture. And we talked about already about color coding. Mm -hmm. You can do that or use shapes. Um, I like to do um, like squares around there for uh, or so that and I've used heart for words of compassion or everlasting love or um, and then you can use a triangle for um, words such as trust, faith and hope and, and I use a triangle because at the top the closer we get you know we're, we're working on getting closer to God uh, at the top of the triangle and um, one of my favorites, too, to suggest is to make a screensaver of the scripture you're trying to memorize. Put it on your iPad or your computer or your phone, and it's um, throughout that day or that week that it's always in front of you, and you can say it out loud, or you can think it or, or write it out or what have you, so. Mm, that's so good, yeah, and I have, I wanted to show this. I'm showing my little notebook. I have um, some scripture that I've memorized or just some verses that I want to focus on praying through, um, just finding a little notebook and jotting down those verses. And then um, you can flip through those daily or weekly, or, you know, when you memorize it, you can go on to the next one. I have verses like, I want to pray for my kids. I want to pray for myself. I want to pray for my husband. Um, so that's been a really good way to just kind of keep verses together that I want to focus on um, and just having it convenient. So... And, and I've got several of those myself, um, but how I came across those is while I was doing my quiet time, if a verse popped out to me, I would have the access. And over a period of time, I completed all those three by five cards, but I love to carry one in my car. So when I'm in a stop sign or a stop light, instead of picking up my phone or going off in thought, I'll look at the scripture and um, I use the acronym STOP. It's scripture today for one to ponder. And I, what I do is I, I take the scripture and just flip it. What it is random scriptures, but God, all his words are alive and active. So it always just penetrates me, my, my heart and and what I do is I look at a scripture real quick, and when it's time to, to move forward in my car, I start thinking, putting my mind on God's word instead of going in the other direction that my mind was going. So um, scripture today for one to ponder and using those three by, by five cards are have been a lifesaver for my mind because that's where the battlefield is. And we talked about that in a couple of sessions ago. So yeah, that's good. That's so good, yes. And we talked a little bit about journaling too, how we like to do journaling that, you know, there's a bunch of different kinds, Bible journaling, where we're writing down our thoughts on what the word meant, um, writing down what method we used, if we used one of these Bible study methods. Um, so yeah, prayer journals are a great way. And we'll, maybe we can dive more into that next week when we talk about prayer. But yes, I've been noticing without us even trying to, prayer keeps just popping on up. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's important. <laughs> Let's dive deeper into that one next week. That would be yeah. good. But yeah. Um, I love this one. You want to talk about the life journal? I think that's so good. Well, the life journal for me is where I just talk about my life to God. Um, it, it really, I, I always start off um, just talking about what's on my heart and it's not a prayer yet. I just start think. I just put in words on paper, what I might be struggling with or, you know, whatever situation or circumstances in my life or what, where my heart is. And then I'm, it's, by the time I, I poured all that out, it's like I've purged it. Now I've made room for God to speak. And most times, not always, it turns into, I take all of that and I, and I turn it into a conversation with God. Mm -hmm. And it just ends up beautiful. And it just really gives a record of my life. And, and you know, I've got a lot of penny stories, you know, pennies and God we trust and where I have journaled that life um, journey a lot of times in that life journal about where God has met me uh, by putting a penny in my path and just helping me recognize, wait a minute, I'm with you. 
don't do this alone. Stop being anxious and stop worrying. And I write what that was about and what have you and how God just brought me peace in the midst of that. So that's kind of what I mean by a life journal. That's awesome. Yeah. A great way to like process your thoughts and kind of get them out there. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And then look, looking back, that'll be such a great thing to look it back. Has and, been. It yeah. has been. I've got um, a couple of drawer fulls of journals throughout the years. And so, and, and I've got a, a friend that she uses um, little notebooks, spiral notebooks, nothing, nothing fancy. So, I mean, it, there's no excuses, y'all. If you, if you really wanted it, you don't have to get something that's formal. So... <laughs> And that's kind of what we want to communicate this whole time is you can do this. Like you yes. don't need fancy tools or huge libraries of books to study God's word. You can do this. We've given you some suggestions of these free resources that are there for you. So really it's going to take saying, you know, I want to do this. Like this is worth the time. This is worth the effort. I want to, I want to go deeper um, in studying God's word. So that's, that's been our whole our whole purpose yeah. in this whole time is you can do that. Start somewhere. Start yes. somewhere. Start with the scripture verse. Pray first. Start with the scripture verse and then go deep. Yeah. It's really that simple, y'all. Yeah. Just start there and then go deep and let, let the Lord lead you there. Yeah. And so we also listed some online um, Bible study tool websites and then some free Bible apps there. Um, so yeah, click, check those out. Um, Go to the website though, even we, they're even connected. So you can just click on them and just take you right there. So yeah, that's uh, awesome. Yeah. Oh, I have so enjoyed talking uh, through this with you, Carolyn. Would you, would you mind closing us out in prayer? And, um, and we just uh, look forward to hearing from you ladies of um, where God takes you on this journey of studying the word. All right, ladies, we're going to close our session in prayer. Thank you so much for being with us. Let's, let's pray and thank him for his word. Lord, thank you again for this time that we can spend um, talking about your word and studying your word. Thank you for the gift um, that you've given us through scripture. Thank you that we can know you more and um, study your word to just see all the truth you have for us. We know that time spent in your word is never wasted. Um, we know that your word is living and active um, and can apply to our lives in any situation. And so um, please give us that desire to study your word um, and spend time with you each and every day. Um, help us to, to have that determination to spend um, time going deeper, not just reading, but going deeper and applying that word to our lives and putting it into action. Um, and we know that you'll do that uh, if we ask you. And so um, I pray specifically for these ladies this week as they're trying out these new methods that we've given them. I pray that you'll give them that um, an abundance of time to study your word and um, that focus that um, we need to get to know you more through your word. And, and we know that um, it'll be such a blessing in our lives. And so um we pray specifically for these ladies this week. And I pray um, that you'll bless them as they continue on this week and um, bring us back together next week as we study your word even further. In Jesus' name, amen.